of the investments that you've done so far, mm -hmm. I'm curious, ha have there been any investments that you regret? Hmm. Either that you invested or perhaps you didn't invest. Um, hi everyone, this is Tadi TV. I am Josh and we're, today we're going to talk about venture capital and how young entrepreneurs can get funding. So Josh, maybe you can start today by telling us what is venture capital? Venture capital is, I guess, the investments we make to startups that are private and that are just getting started. And the reason why they exist is that we want businesses that may look hard to start or just takes a lot of money to accelerate to really get to the market faster. So we're taking a risky bet knowing that this could possibly be a billion dollar business so that instead of seeing it in like 10, 20 years, hopefully we can see it in five or 10. How did you get started in venture capital? Oh yeah, so I actually got started as I was uh, working at Google. I met another colleague who was there for about six years and he was thinking of quitting Google to start his own fund. And to be honest, I had no idea what venture capital was. I just worked with startups before and just thought that we got money from the angels. <laughs> Turns out that they were actually real people. I just loved getting involved in it, getting involved in the innovation part. And after doing a few due diligence reports for my friend, realized that this is something that I wanted to do. And we realized that it was a fit together. So I've been working in VC for the past two and a half years. Great. And you're based in Silicon Valley? Yeah, so work was based in San Francisco. I actually just moved to a new fund based in Palo Alto where all the venture capitals are. So in the US, there's actually this road called Ten Tilled Road where literally every major VC is there. I guess I'm just neighboring there and we'll be there after COVID is over in 2022. 2022, that's when COVID is gonna be over? Uh, fingers crossed, <laughs> but then they want me back in the office then. So until then I'll be in Korea. So you've probably seen a lot of startups already, mm -hmm. hundreds not thousands of startups. So from a VC's perspective, what's the most important thing that you look for when you're making a potential investment? Hmm. So I think the first question that uh, I ask is obviously the market size. Because as I said before, we're making a risky bet knowing that this is going to become a huge return for our investments. And also because we're locking up money for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. If we feel like the return is not going to be high, because we know that no business is going to eat up the whole market. Even in Google and Facebook, like we know that they're the top companies, or even Amazon, but then they actually, if you look at the amount of um, total market, they only take a small portion of it. Knowing that even if your business wildly succeeds, it's going to at most take some little portion of the market. We want to see what it can eventually get to. And the second thing that we look at is the founder market fit. So knowing that at the beginning of stages, the founder is likely going to pivot. If you even look at the companies that IPO this year, most of them have pivoted. Like for example, Slack was a gaming company before it became a communications company. And so was Pinterest. It was a company that pivoted too. I think the only company that probably didn't pivot was actually Airbnb. But we all know that Airbnb just hit a gold mine and it also struggled in the beginning. So considering that, we just want to see when you guys show us the market, how the founder really fits there and why this founder is the one that's going to win out this market. Kind of going with that, the third thing that we look at is the market problem insight that the founder has. So we don't really focus on the solution because we think that the solution is going to change. You are going to pivot. The one thing that we really latch onto is whether you have an insight of the problem that no one else has and the problem that we can see being a big market in the future. So we want to know how you got to this problem and how you have a deep understanding of this that surprises us. Because if it surprises us and if we feel like it's contrarian, then we know that this could be a great timing because nobody else probably tried it for the reason you stated. So as a VC, and I'm sure that this might depend on the case, which might be more important for you when you're working with uh, startups? Is it the person or say the founders of the startup or is it the actual product itself or both? Hmm. So if it's really early stage, I'm definitely the founder. I think the biggest mistakes I've made as an investor for early stage startups was trying to judge the product and not the founder enough. Mm -hmm. The VC game is a long game, so we're thinking like 8 to 10 year horizon here. If they're smart and if they're a hustler, then they're going to beat out the market. And I think I've seen that time to time again. For early stage it would be that, but for a later stage it would be the product. Has this founder proven themselves as someone that can find the product market fit fast enough? Or if they're going to pivot, how 
well have they pivoted and what was the reasoning behind the pivots? Because I want to make sure that even if they went through several years of difficulty, that those difficulty years were years of learning and years that are getting them closer and closer to the product. So of the investments that you've done so far, I'm curious, have there been any investments that you regret? Hmm. Either that you invested or perhaps you didn't invest? Um, yes, there is a company that I regret that we haven't invested in. I can't give the exact details, but um, it was in the healthcare space where their product was technically illegal. What they're saying was that they're betting that they can make this product legal in the future. Um, but I still didn't know what the timeline of that was going to be. I didn't know how fast the regulations were going to change. So I felt that the risk of this possibly failing was higher than this possibly being able to enter the market. And turned out that that was wrong. That regulations changed a lot faster than I expected. Um, the founders found a product market fit very fast. And now they're one of the hottest healthcare startups. Um, big regret. We are still hitting our heads about it. but. It's part of our job. I feel like even as a VC, I think sometimes people think that investors have all the answers. Definitely not the case. We make mistakes all the time. I think what we try to do is try to see how we can learn from it. And as I said before, that's kind of why I bet more on the founder and focus more on the founder market fit now. Okay, so I know you do a lot of investments around the world. I wonder if you've seen any similarities or differences in terms of founder attributes among say US born founders uh -huh. uh, versus Korean ones. Right, so I think that the US born founders, they are focused on one problem and like really dive into it and make that one solution like A plus, but they fail at everything else. So there's never a perfect startup per se, but then what we really focus on is that one thing that they're really good at and really try to sharpen that edge and um, really try to like beat out all the competition in that sense. But I think in Korea, they have a greater failure of being bad at everything. Like, instead of trying to be good at everything, I think they try to be marginally better at everything. So like, in a way, if I was to look at the report, they'd have all Bs, but no As. Mm. So I just don't know if they're gonna win out the whole market or beat out the incumbents. Maybe it's because in Korea, we fear failure, taking bigger risks with a longer time horizon is more discouraged because VCs want faster returns. But I think that's what I've noticed so far. In the States, I think it's actually more difficult to fundraise because you have to go to VCs and pitch. Whereas in Korea, you can't honestly go through the government money. But then the downside of that is that the government money requires so much paperwork that I think that a lot of founders have to go through years of inefficiency. I think that at times, that's what makes them not be able to grow as fast early on and develop their unique edge compared to US startups that tends to accelerate a lot faster in the beginning stages. So you've worked at uh, big corporations uh, as well as startups and now in VC. If you could choose another line of work, like right now, if mm -hmm. you could do anything else and there is 0% chance of failure, what would you be doing right now? Hmm. I think if there's 0% chance of failure, I'll probably want to do some government work. Mm. I think that there's a lot of things that Korean government can do differently for startups that will help them accelerate faster. I think there's a lot of inefficiencies that we can work around it. I know that a lot of Korean regulations have been made because a lot of um, previous people have abused looser regulations and they wanted to make sure that the government spending their spent right. But I think that the opportunity cost for possibly having one or two big unicorns at the cost of trying to make sure that everyone follows government regulations is just simply too high. And if I could possibly work to change that, I think that that's definitely a thing that I would love to, love to explore and do. So if you look at the Korean startup ecosystem, if you could change either add, delete, or revise one rule uh -huh. or piece of legislation right now, which one would it be? I think it would be the amount of paperwork that they have to submit. For a startup, trying to find product market fit at an early stage is already so mission critical. Having them be as lean as possible will be the first thing that I really try to focus on. If we do that, then I think that we're going to see a lot more startups entering Series A and Series B and really having the impact that they want. But then I think unless we have that, a lot of startups are going to struggle with mm. being able to really try to iterate fast because they will also probably fear that the government funding is running out because they just can't move as fast. Mm. And I feel like the questions that you begin to ask when you think about trying to survive instead of trying to innovate fundamentally changes. Mm. So I think that's one part that I'd love to change. 
So how would that look in practice? Would you get rid of all paperwork because it's government money? You want to be able to monitor whether it's been used properly. How do you think that that could actually play out in practice? Hmm. So I guess for one, I think that I'll be looser with what they can spend the money on. Maybe with the reports, just try to digitize it mm. and maybe have some algorithm like catch which ones should be um, important, which ones are not, so that they get quicker feedback mm -hmm. and don't have to worry too much about what the government people will think. And I think that I'll also try to simplify the requirements of what the person needs to submit mm. so that as long as I know that their efforts are solely based on trying to find product market fit, um, I'll be okay with it. Great. Hopefully we can see that. Oh, that would be a great, and it'll save the trees as well. That's true, yeah. <laughs> so maybe I can move on to our last question, mm -hmm. uh, which is there are a lot of young entrepreneurs in Korea right now. So if you were in their shoes, what can they do perhaps at the university level or when they're still kind of in the early stages uh, mm -hmm. that might help them prepare to get uh, more funding down the line? Mm, I think for one, like practice building products. So when I was at college, I actually tried to make Uber Pool before Uber Pool came out. And we actually had 300 people sign up. And then a month later, Uber Pool came out. So we literally just went out of business because we obviously couldn't compete against Uber. For me, it was like an experience of like what it's like to build a product. It just taught me like what entrepreneurship's kind of like, like what kind of things I have to consider when doing a business. And just like try all these different like businesses. And like if you have any ideas, just try it. Because the opportunity cost at college is so low. You can fail multiple times, but then you're still gonna be in college. It's not like you'll be fired and not have anywhere to go. You're also gonna be, be surrounded by so many people that you can quickly test out your product without having to pay much for user testing per se. Whether it be entrepreneurship class or whether it just be with friends, which is what I did. Try out different projects and see if it goes anywhere. Because right now there's so many pitch competitions and even at universities there's like different endowments to fund college projects that I just try to fail and you never know. Every startup, founder say that if they were told to do the startup again, they always say no. They do it because they don't know what's what this is going to lead to. And sometimes you might hit a gold mine. And if you do, you'll be able to retire in your early 30s <laughs> and just enjoy your life. But if not, um, you'll get to do a lot of learnings and possibly do another startup that does a lot better. I was actually talking with a venture capitalist um, two days ago who was telling me that many of the ones that have big exits normally had a small exit first. So there's actually not that many people that gets that big exit in the first place. So if anything, kind of see it as you training yourself for the bigger exit in the future, or if you also get the right opportunity and find the right people, you might also end up as a venture capitalist like me. I think that there's always different routes you can go by doing a startup, but I think it's just the amount of learnings that you can get that I think makes the opportunity cost worthwhile. And honestly, I've been in a big company before. I feel like trying to make a lot of money from big company is always going to take more time than taking slight risks here and there and seeing where you go with it. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>